Hello everyone, welcome to a new session on the new topic theoretical distributions and it is presented by Shantala Kulkarni, Department of Statistics, Gopti PU College of Commerce and Science. So today we will be beginning with a new chapter that is theoretical distributions. Now before I start anything, I want to explain some very basic concepts to you all which you have already studied in PUC 1. So the same repetition or the explanation part will be done. The first thing here you have to know what is a discrete variable and what is a continuous variable. What is a frequency distribution or what is a probability distribution. So first variable, what is the meaning of a variable? Variable is a term or a unit of measurement which keeps on changing from one thing to another. Now there are two variables, discrete variable and continuous variable. Discrete variable means a variable which takes some specific definite value in the given range. For example, uh, number of children in a family, number of students in a class. And what is the meaning of continuous variable? Continuous variable is a variable which takes all the values in the given range, all the possible values in the given range. For example, height of the students, weight of the students. Now this is the actual definition of discrete and continuous. Now let me make it more simpler and easier for you all to understand. Now discrete means, see after 1, the number 1, the next number comes 2, the next com number comes 3. So when you are going to start with 1 and you jump to 2 and when you jump to 3, such a variable is called as discrete, it is called as discrete, okay. But you know that if this is a number 1 and this is 2, if you observe closely, there are infinite numbers between 1 and 2. That is how 1.00001 is also a number between 1 to 2, right? Then 1.99999, it's, it's like a total infinite series of numbers I can say. So, when a variable takes all the possible values from this range, that is between 1 to 2, it's an infinite range. Such a variable is called as continuous variable and when a variable takes right from 1 it directly jumps to 2, okay. From, from 1 it jumps directly to 2, from 2 it will jump directly to 3. So such a variable is called as discrete variable. Now what examples did I give? For discrete I gave number of family members uh, uh, in the family or number of uh, children in a class. Yes, very true. Number of family members means now there are five members in a family, mummy, papa, brother, sister. Suppose the brother is just one month old, we will not say that we are the family members are 4.1 or 4.2. You don't say like that. Even if the baby is one month old, you are giving a full status to it. So it is complete five family members are there. Now number of children in the class, there are 60 children, there are 70 children, there are 85 children. We never say that if the height of the some child is less or if the uh, height of some child is too, too uh, long or something like that. We never say that the strength of the class is 80.5, 80.125. We never give in decimals. So that which is never given in decimals, that is a discrete variable. I hope the concept is clear. Now I give examples to uh, uh, continuous variable, heights of students, weight of students, yes. Whenever we measure height, it is always, we are not saying that the child may be 5 feet uh, 1 inch tall, some centimeters. Every child's height is differing even by millimeters and centimeters. Then even the weight is also differing like one child is 35 kgs some grams, one child is 45 kgs some grams. It's not perfectly 45 or it's not perfectly 35. So it's taking all the possible those decimal bit, bit values. So such a variable is called as continuous variable. So before we start with theoretical distribution, the first and foremost thing what you have to remember is the difference between discrete variable and continuous variable. I hope the concept is clear. 
next comes frequency distribution now what is the meaning of distribution distribution means you are everything distributing in a particular table now frequency distribution means you the frequencies are distributed in a table so that is observed frequency distribution and then the theoretical or expected frequency distribution means you are applying some theory or some rules to get those frequency distribution when you put it in a table the way when the frequencies are put in a table you remember in puc when you made the tally marking and all that how many numbers are in which group and all that is nothing but the frequency distribution only so based on that only you will be having theoretical distribution here under theoretical distribution you will be applying certain theories or certain rules to get the frequencies or solve the sums now it is clearly lit written here theoretical distributions are deduced mathematically on the basis of previous experience or theoretical considerations theoretical distributions are originated according to certain theoretical assumptions and restrictions theoretical probability distributions are derived using the theory of probability for the outcomes of a conceptual experiment <clears throat> now what does this mean you know actually now probability means something which you are going to calculate of that particular event which is not happening which is going to happen later so probability basically is that 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 event which is which is going to occur what are the possible possibilities for that particular event to happen that calculation part is nothing but probability this is uh, undoubtedly a interesting topic where it will challenge you to think and how to solve the sums and all but yes always i have been saying to you all ki uh, probability needs logical reasoning and they are the live examples of her life too even as if you children remember in my class in the last year i told you all every event of our life we are not sure what is going to happen in the next moment we are really not aware of it but based on previous or past experience we say that this is how the day is going to happen this is how it's going to happen so here probability what does the role of the probability do it calculates it gives the favorable conditions like for example out of 10 there are 9 means there is that particular event has got more chance to happen to occur if out of 10 there are 4 if the number is 4 upon 10 so that particular event has got less chance to occur this is how the calculation part is all so that is basically the simple thing is probability is calculating the most probable value for a particular event to happen now this probability distribution of a discrete random variable is known as discrete probability distribution correct when you are going to use a discrete variable so we are going to use the word discrete probability distribution probability distribution of a continuous random variable is known as continuous probability distribution you have some important distributions to study now how many distributions you are going to study you are going to study bernoulli distribution you are going to study binomial distribution you will be studying poisson distribution you will be studying hypergeometric distribution the fourth one the fifth one is normal distribution sixth one is chi square distribution and the seventh one is students t distribution from first to fourth this is a you are going to deal with discrete random variable you will be dealing with discrete and the remaining one that is 5 6 and 7 it will be a continuous variable it's going to be a continuous variable children the concept is very simple if you have to solve the example on the first four distribution you have to follow the rules of that particular distribution now what did the statisticians do the statisticians now james bernoulli poisson these all these statisticians they derived certain theories and they applied the theories to these examples to come to conclusion what is the possibility so theoretical distribution is to apply certain restrictions or certain assumptions or certain rules to solve the example that is what you have to keep in your mind and from examination point of view yes you will be having a 10 mark question you will be having a 5 mark question you will be having a 2 mark question and you will be having a 1 mark question i think more than 25 to 30 marks is allotted from this topic 
so uh, yes of course let me tell one more thing also if you are not comfortable there are other topics also which you can make it strong uh, but from understanding point of view yes you can make an effort and understand it and uh, i will try my level best to make it more simple and easier for you all to understand the concepts now it's given here the first four distributions are discrete probability distributions and the remaining distributions are con continuous probability distribution now let us first begin with the uh, the first distribution that is bernoulli distribution we will just see what this bernoulli distribution is all about we will just have a look to it yes bernoulli distribution was discovered by swiss mathematicians james bernoulli this is a discrete probability distribution now let us see what is the definition of uh, bernoulli distribution if x is a discrete random variable see the word discrete is being used with the probability mass function for a discrete means group of probabilities we use the word mass and for continuous we'll be using probability density function see this is how we write it in the general term p of x is equal to p to the power of x q to the power of 1 minus x this is a formula or the pmf you'll be using to solve the example now what are the values x is going to take see x is a general term right we don't know what values x is going to take so here x will take only two values that is 0 and 1 now what is this p and q p is the success rate and q is the failure rate we are using these two particular notations p we are using for success and q we are using for failure and the value of p lies between 0 and 1 it is between 0 and 1 and q is obtained from 1 minus p means 1 plus uh, sorry q uh, p plus q is always equal to 1 either there is going to be a success either there is going to be a failure how do you calculate success when you uh, subtract your failure from 1 you calculate your success or how do you calculate your failure you subtract your success from 1 uh, you get your failure that is how you calculate then x is a Bernoulli variate the distribution of x is called Bernoulli distribution I repeat the definition once more if x is a discrete random variable with a probability mass function p of x is equal to p to the power of x q to the power of 1 minus x where x is equal to 0 and 0 and 1 and p lies between 0 and 1 q is equal to 1 minus p then x is a Bernoulli variate the distribution of x is called Bernoulli distribution. Children just remember when you are going to solve examples on theoretical distributions, you fix this in your mind that you are using certain rules, certain assumptions, certain restrictions. It's not just simple calculation 1 plus 1 is 2. Nah. You are going to use certain rules. Now you are going to use the probability mass function to solve the examples. This is you have to keep in your mind then things will be more easier for you all. Now let us see what are the examples of Bernoulli variate. Bernoulli variate, the first example is number of heads obtained in a toss of a coin. Now when you are going to toss a coin, how many heads are going to come? Only one. Na. See the range of Bernoulli distribution is 0 and 1. Either it is going to be 0 or 1. Either you are going to get a head or you are not going to head a, not going to get a head or you will be getting a tail when you just toss a single coin. Then Number of male children when a baby is born. See, when a baby is born, either it's going to be male or it's going to be female. The third one, number of bombs hitting when a bomb is dropped on the airplane, uh, airplane, aeroplane. Sorry, number of bombs hitting the bridge. See, only one bomb you can drop it, and that bomb, uh, whether it will hit the aeroplane or it will not hit, that is also one only. So, where the possibility is only of it will happen or not happen. So the, the range 0 means it will not happen, 1 means it is going to happen. Now how do we write this uh, Bernoulli distribution with parameter p? It can be written like the x value which is going to take 0, 1 and p of x. When it is 0 means it is failure, when it is 1 means it is success. Total event is going to happen 1. 
now the important thing are the features of bernoulli distribution now every th in theoretical distribution every distribution has got a feature based on those features only we have to solve the examples now what is the first feature bernoulli distribution has one constant namely p which is the parameter of the bernoulli distribution it's only p it's a only one constant of the bernoulli distribution then what is its range means how far it can go its range is only 0 to 1 that is the range of the bernoulli distribution the third part or the third feature for a bernoulli distribution how do we write the probability mass function p of x is equal to p to the power of x q to the power of 1 minus x where x will take only two values that 0 to 1 p lies between 0 to 1 and q is equal to 1 minus p very important we always write what is the variance what is the standard deviation or what is the uh, mean of it for a bernoulli distribution mean is represented by its own parameter that is p variance we write it in the form of pq and standard deviation you know it's a root of the variance that is root of pq this pq only you will be writing it here root of pq and the fifth point in a bernoulli distribution mean is greater than variance children please remember these features are important and they can come for even 2 marks or some of the important distributions it's only it's also for 5 marks for example normal distribution they will give you a question on 5 marks to write the features so the features you can just see i think i should repeat it once more bernoulli distribution has one constant namely p which is the parameter of the bernoulli distribution then its range is 0 to 1. Third, for a Bernoulli distribution, the probability mass function is written P of x q to the power of 1 minus x, where x takes the value 0 to 1 and P is also between 0 to 1 and q is equal to 1 minus P. Then how do we write the uh, mean, variance and standard deviation of the Bernoulli distribution? Mean is represented by its own parameter, variance is P into q, standard deviation is root of PQ. Then in a Bernoulli distribution, mean is greater than variance. It can be a one mark question. Most of the time they have asked in the question. So here one mark, two mark uh, possibilities are a lot. Now, what is a Bernoulli trial or a Bernoulli experiment? Bernoulli trial or a Bernoulli experiment. How that experiment is conducted? If a trial results either in success or failure, with the probability of success p remains the same when the trial is repeated any number of times then such a trial is known as bernoulli trial for example you are going to take one coin okay you have one coin and you keep tossing it what are the outcomes is going to either once you'll be getting head or once you'll be getting tail so you if you keep on tossing it about 10 times or 15 times or 20 times it, it will be either head or tail, um, head once tail, head once tail. So when the result is fixed, you know such a trial or an experiment is called as Bernoulli trial. Now we will see what are the examples of uh, Bernoulli trial when we are going to toss it. Tossing of a fair coin can be considered as Bernoulli trial because the toss may result in success or failure and the probability of success remains the same for any trial. True, na? See, when you are going to toss a coin, head is also having 50% chance, tail is also having 50% chance. So the outcome is head or tail. Now let us take a second example. The rolling of a fair die once can be considered as a Bernoulli trial because the rolling may result in a success say getting a number 6 or a failure otherwise and the probability of success remains same for any trial means 1 upon 6. Suppose the dice which has got 6 faces the highest number has got more weightage so it has got only 1 uh, uh, it's, it's, being, it's going to be repeated only once so that's probability value is going to be 1 upon 6. Now what is the result here? It says that if 
x1 x2 x3 so on xn are independently and identically distributed bernoulli variates with con common parameter p then their sum x is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus so on till xn is a bernoulli binomial variate with parameter n and p the most beautiful part of this lesson is bernoulli will change itself to binomial at, uh, under certain conditions if that same if instead of taking one coin if you take more than two coins if you take three coins and keep tossing that bernoulli distribution will change itself to binomial binomial will follow certain rules and it will change itself to poisson poisson will follow certain rules and it will come to hypergeometric vice versa so there are certain rules and regulations which we change little bit here and there you can easily change or convert of course by following certain rules and regulations in today's class i think i've explained the theoretical part in the next class we will solve simple simple examples on first bernoulli before starting the examples i will once more brief the things what you all needed and i will make the concepts more simple and clear for you all so in today's class i think we have done with uh, the little bit of explanation what is needed and i'm sure you will understand yes please pay attention you will understand it much better thank you for today's class